What about Corin made the whole cast freak out? How did the actress end up in hospital after shooting a scene? And why would she leave a party if she saw Prince William and Harry? Hi, I'm Janet. Let's meet the on-screen Lady Di. All the Dianas Princess Diana is the most popular member of the royal family among filmmakers. We doubt that there's even one actress who wouldn't dream to play her. And some lucky ones got their chance to make that dream a reality. In 1993, Serena Scott Thomas played her in the TV film. Three years later, Julie Cox portrayed her in Princess in Love. 2007 saw Genevieve O'Reilly in a docudrama which dived into the final period of Diana's life. Finally, in 2013, Oscar nominee Naomi Watts turned into the People's Princess. The world has yet to see other on-screen Dianas. In 2021, Netflix is set to release an on-screen version of the musical stage show Diana, with Gina Duvall playing her. And in 2022, we'll watch Kristen Stewart portray the princess in Between the Past and the Future. We are very happy to welcome our present-time Lady Di, Emma Corrin. The 24-year-old British actress has just blown everyone's mind, playing the icon in the fourth season of the Netflix hit, The Crown. Despite the importance of her character, we had barely heard anything about the actress who was about to portray the beloved Princess Diana. So, who is Emma Corrin? Like her heroine, teen Emma attended a posh all-girls boarding school, where she got into dancing and acting. Later, she was studying drama here and there, and her first audition for Lady Di happened when she was still in school. By that time, she'd had just a few on-screen appearances. You might recognize her as Miss South Africa in Misbehavior, or as the girlfriend of a young Batman's butler-to-be in Pennyworth. And then, some kind of magic happened. Benjamin Karen, the director and executive producer of The Crown, said Emma's audition was notorious. Another director of the show, Jessica Hobbs remembers the young actress was asked to sing the song from the Phantom of the Opera, and without hesitation, she was like, all right, and sang it a cappella in a room full of people. The vulnerability and the blush on Emma's cheeks struck Jessica, and she thought, she can do this. When Corin did a chemistry read with Josh O'Connor, who played young Charles, everybody around them felt the chemistry. After another read, just in case, Ben turned to the executive producer, Suzanne Mackey, asking, Can I… can I tell her? When Suzanne agreed, the director kneeled and asked Corin, Will you be our Diana? It was so intense, Emma confessed. O'Connor confirmed that it was that dramatic, comparing it to the climactic moments of the X Factor show. Everybody witnessed how Emma froze, started to cry, then Ben did too, and Josh gave her a big hug. On the way back home, Corin played the theme music from The Crown in her car to appreciate the significance of the moment fully. And when she arrived, she managed to keep the news a secret for like 15 seconds. It was surreal. Could the inexperienced actress even imagine joining the team of Olivia Colman, Helena Bonham Carter, and Gillian Anderson? Insane household names, just like that. Karen marked that at that point, Emma was going through a similar experience that Diana went through suddenly getting thrust into the public eye in a role that everybody had had their eyes on, getting in the newspaper and being papped. He added, anything you feel about it, be it fear or excitement or nervousness, be aware of it because that's exactly how she would have been feeling. He was so right. And we'll talk about that, no pressure at all, right after we discuss. The Great Transformation Emma said she looks more like a young Jodie Foster rather than Diana. Corin's mother, though, has often been mistaken for the latter, so we guess the girl's genes, combined with the outstanding work from the stylists, did their job. According to Olivia Coleman, when Emma first appeared in Diana's wig, it freaked everyone out. That's how much she looked like her. She looked the spitting image of Diana, and it's kind of extraordinary and kind of spooky, Josh O'Connor told Harper's Bazaar. It was also about the speech and the moves which Emma mastered with the help of coaches. Corin grasped the smile and the look, the nod to the side, and the slight slouch of Lady Di, who was as tall as her husband. The actress also lowered her intonations at the end of each phrase like Princess Diana did, which made her sound very sweet, sincere, and a bit sad at the same time. She even worked out a perfect Diana-like, all right. 
Yeah, I just said all right. I don't know, is this there's something that something about how, how she said all right. The costumes of Diana's memorable outfits are basically every girl's dream. Though, in the crown, Miss Spencer didn't appear as a global fashion icon right away. Emma found it hilarious that, after all the hype around her joining the cast, she'd be dressed as a tree the first time she appears in the season. Corin moaned that the yellow dungarees almost made her cry. The actress seems to be quite a fashionista herself, so it may have actually been quite a painful experience for her. But the deeper they got into the season, the more dazzling it got. The actress even sneaked one of the gold chains from the set in the end. Corin was lucky to wear vintage and specially made clothes. From whimsical sweaters and standout collars to Australian all-occasion outfits. From the blue suit announcing their engagement to the statement black Christmas dress. From the red opera gown to the baby blue dancing one. Then the 80s wide-shouldered suits and more. But the biggest highlight, the culmination of Diana's wardrobe, was the wedding dress. It took 600 hours and about 10 people to create it. The Emanuels, who designed the original dress for the princess, consulted the show and gave the base for a further transformation specifically for Corin. While the 25-foot train and 153-yard veil were still being made, Emma rehearsed with a long tail of bedsheets sewn together. The finished gown was so massive, it took several people to put it on. When Emma finally changed and walked through the huge oak doors to the crew, everyone fell silent and she burst into tears. The moment was very touching and almost sacred. Corin felt like she was really about to get married when she put the dress on. She even felt moved to FaceTime her mom so that she wouldn't miss the wedding. Who wouldn't in her place? The Challenge of Becoming Lady Di the young actress initially felt daunted by the role of such a massive historical figure. She told The Graham Norton Show that she went into it with a huge sense of pressure. Because she, Diana, was so adored, and because there is this sense from everyone of almost ownership, like they knew her. But after realizing she would be working with the scriptwriter's vision of events, she recentered herself. This is our version of Diana, the actress summed up. Being a huge fan of Diana's for years, Emma got in touch with her character pretty quickly. She even has a cockapoo named Spencer. The actress did thorough research to prepare for her role, studying documentaries and meeting with Diana's private secretary, Patrick Jeffson. In the end, Emma felt like she was close friends with the princess. Each of the cast members took care of the newbie, especially her closest co-star, Josh O'Connor. They became really good friends and hung out on and off set. Also, Corn felt like Olivia Coleman took her under her wing immediately. Olivia was so nice and fun and had a lovely maternal energy on set. The queen's meant to be completely the opposite, Emma commented. But honestly, at the flick of a switch, she was in character. I was absolutely terrified. No acting required. The hardest scenes for Corn were the ones that dealt with bulimia. In fact, it was her who insisted on showing it more prominently in the scripts. She mentioned that Diana spoke candidly about it, which was incredibly ahead of its time. And Emma wanted to do her and the condition justice. Speaking of health issues, Emma had to be hospitalized after shooting one of the hardest scenes in Spain. Being asthmatic and ill for a while with a bad cough, Corin had to film in a freezing cold swimming pool with a little Harry who couldn't swim. After that, the doctors wouldn't allow her to leave the hospital because of her low oxygen levels. The attending nurses offered her, in broken English, a cardboard bag to cover her head so no one would recognize she was Princess Diana. The young star really did her best to proudly portray her idol. But did others like it? The praise and the backlash. According to Josh O'Connell, Emma did a brilliant job and it was breathtakingly accurate. Ben Karen marked that Corin's genuine empathy for Diana helped her understand the princess as a person, and that shows in her performance. Evening Standard admitted Corin's appearance in the series was a gorgeous breakout turn. The Times stated that Emma Corin's performance blossomed and bloomed, and pretty soon she was a tour de force as Diana, and that she helped to make The Crown an excellent series. Who wasn't very pleased about the series were the living members of the royal family. They, and even members of parliament, are specifically upset by the portrayal of Diana and Prince Charles's romance and marriage, adding Camilla Parker Bowles to the mix. Charles's friends accused producers of trolling on a Hollywood budget, exploiting the royal family's pain for financial gain and twisting the events. 
Emma Corrin responded to the backlash, saying that everyone in The Crown always reminds viewers that the series is fictionalized, although it has its roots in reality and in some fact. Nevertheless, she does understand why people would be upset. Because this is history, and even with Diana, you know, it's still very fresh, I suppose, everything that happened. The actress confessed to GQ that she can't imagine what Princes William and Harry will make of the show. She said, if someone made a program about her grandma, who died last year, that would be difficult for her to watch. Though Emma's curious about what they think of her portrayal of Diana, she would never dare to ask them. If I ever saw them at a party, I'd probably leave. Earlier this year, the author of Prince Harry's biography said that the first thing he asked upon their meeting was if she was watching The Crown, adding, I'm going to make sure I stop it before they get to me. Let's hope that the show's executives will take the prince's strong word into account and finish all they've been up to before he acts upon that. What about Emma Corrin? Her work in the final two seasons of The Crown will be picked up by an Australian actress, Elizabeth Debicki, who resembles Diana even more. The star of Tenet, The Great Gatsby, and Man from Uncle was cast to portray the Princess of Wales from her separation from Charles up to her tragic death. Corrin admits that parting with the crown felt like her ex was moving on and that sadly, she'll really miss playing her magnificent character. Now she's got other things on her plate though, like dealing with sudden fame and the fact that people will know you without knowing you at all. Guess this is what comes with bringing the royal icon of philanthropy and fashion to the new generation. What do you think of the 2020 Diana on screen? And would you run from the princes at a party after playing their mom? Tell us in the comments and stay awesome.